assalamu alaikum lecture 1 of machine learning and in this lecture i am going to introduce you with the fundamental concepts of machine learning and pattern recognition so here are the lecture contents uh, i will start with the definition of machine learning and few examples where machine learning applications are used then uh, i will discuss some rudimentary concepts about different types of machine learning and this lecture will also deal with the initial problems with the data collection and attributes management and finally i will conclude by emphasizing a typical machine learning task management framework so whenever you talk about machine learning you talk about the recognition of a concept which is the fundamental motivation behind the machine learning concepts if you talk in a very generic terms it is very difficult to describe what learning is so definition of certain concepts such as machine learning or learning are hard to describe for example if you are given a task to describe the face of your friend it will be difficult for you to describe using the features of his face for or in another example if you are asked to describe an oak tree you will also find yourself in the same problem but if you are given with a resemblance or certain examples you will provide with the prediction that your friend may look like some of the example faces which have been shown to you or much is, is the same case for the oak tree therefore the meaning can be conveyed by examples or in other words data so we are both producers and consumers of data so in machine learning environment we will be uh, either producing or consuming data and we have to be very clear about machine learning data that the data uh, the initial definition of the data is that it is the raw form of input but in machine learning data is not a random form of input it has some structure for example it describes the customer behavior or the number of transactions or any face recognition in any face recognition system it describes the features of a face so we have an assumption in the machine learning that there are a number of available algorithms that allow the computer to learn from these examples to describe the definitions of certain concepts so you learn from the example that means you identify the patterns from the example and then if you are given a new example or a new face in this case your machine learning algorithm will be able to identify that face while comparing with the other learned examples so it is not just a simple comparison in the machine learning algorithms will learn from the example and they will learn the patterns and then predict on those patterns so machine learning uh, is used to develop such learning algorithms and study their behavior so what actually is a machine learning 
by definition machine learning is the science and art of programming computers so that they can learn from the data so again we have the role of statistics which is uh, used for the inference from a sample so the term inference is said that whenever you are predicting a value you have to specify a level of confidence that how sure you are about a prediction so you can get this uh, precision or surety by uh, specifying a statistical inference that means if a certain amount of examples uh, resemble a particular feature or characteristic then you can say with the uh, probability that this new example resembles the same scenario there is also the role of computer science which is required by the uh, by the development side or for the efficient algorithms which solve the optimization problems and represent and evaluate those models for inference so there is another machine learning definition the machine learning is a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed a more mathematical definition of the machine learning and a more qualified definition of machine learning is provided by tom mitchell in 1997 it states that a computer program is said to learn with from the experience e with respect to some task and some performance measure so you have an experience which improves with time or with a exposure to the task c and it has a some performance measure and if the performance on the t as measured by the performance measure p improves with the experience e so that is the fundamental definition of learning that means if uh, if if you compare a human brain learning it is the same that with time or with exposure to the same task the brain is able to learn so the machine learning or machine learning algorithm will be able to learn with the time or with the exposure improving its its performance measure and overall experience of learning why would you like to learn that is also an essential question to answer so machine learning is a programming computers to optimize a performance criterion using example data or the past experience so you will like to learn for those cases where you have no certain solution so in other case there is no need to learn to calculate the payroll because it has unique set of rules and regulations which can be programmed specifically into a software and which do not require a change or adaptation with changing data so therefore learning is used when you have a limited human expertise that means if you are dealing with a domain where human expertise are limited or there is an expensive cost to employ human engineers to find out or to solve the problem so in extreme cases if you are planning a navigator on the Mars or any exploration robot for an unknown environment machine learning is the preferred choice in more simpler terms humans are unable to explain their experiences or expertise such as in speech recognition or in 
uh, even in the text or uh, natural language processing because there is so much uh, difference between the handwriting or even in the speech is to recognize and people can uh, mislead those prediction therefore the machine learning algorithms are required to learn those patterns in each speech recognition or other form of uh, textual information machine learning is also useful when the solution changes in time for example if you have to dynamically allocate the resources with respect to user preferences or you want to root on a computer network with changing uh, routes dynamically machine learning is also helpful to find solution which needs adaptation to the particular cases for example user biometrics so in most cases for machine learning algorithms but not for all cases data is cheap and abundant because we have huge amount of data available in data warehouses and data marts but for all cases the knowledge is expensive and scarce because you may employ a number of persons or experts to mark your data with respect to an actual outcome therefore you have to be very careful in the selection of data as well so for example if we go with this uh, assumption that data is cheap and abundantly available we take the example of the uh, retail for example we have a lot of customer transaction and we have little knowledge about the customer behavior uh, a similar example can also be thought in the online shopping software for example people who bought product a also bought the product a b so you have to find out this knowledge which is expensive without the learning software so what is it good for the machine learning so specifically you want to build a model that is good and useful approximation to the data that means it actually captures all the ingredients of the data and then you extract that structure from the data for understanding the process behind the data or the making predictions for the future machine learning is good for number of applications such as for the problems which existing solution require a lot of fine tuning or a long list of rules so instead of programming those hard coded rules into the system you make a learning system which learns with the experience it is useful to get insights about complex problems and large amount of data it is useful for recognition of objects difficult to describe precisely for example biological objects or objects in the automated machinery or plants it is useful for automated classification of certain events for example identification of fraudulent phone calls email spams or other outliers it is useful for fluctuating environments as well as a machine learning system can adapt to new data if it employs an online learning mechanism and there are other certain applications such as document classification prediction of gene function and so on so it has been widely used in many other applications 
even in the current advent of corona virus so before proceeding forward let's have a look at few example application and what kind of machine learning techniques are useful to handle those application so we have a first example it states that we have images of products to automatically classify them it it can be images of products or images of persons to automatically classify or identify them so this is a simple image classification task and it is typically performed using the neural networks and convoluted neural networks is the specific field to handle such kind of tasks we will discuss these kind of networks in future lectures so another example application can be detecting some kind of disease or uh, for example tumors in brain scans this is again a semantic segmentation and it is also done by the convoluted neural network machine learning examples can be a classifying or classification of news articles and this is natural language processing and more specifically a text classification it is tackled by recurrent neural networks convoluted neural networks or transformers another ex example application can be summarization of long documents automatically again documents deal with the natural language processing called text summarization and again using the same tools you can also employ uh, machine learning in automated chatbots or personal assistants so this involves many natural language processing components including natural language understanding and question and answering modules another example can be flagging of offensive comments on discussion forums such as social media or other blogs this is also again text classification and it can be employed by a natural language processing tools you can also use machine learning to forecast companies revenues next year based on the current performance metrics so predicting a value is the regression task it is tackled by any regression model such as linear regression or non linear regression such as a polynomial regression model or a spot vector machine or you can employ random forest or even a neural network if the task is complex another example can be making your app to react with voice commands this is speech recognition and neural networks are used again you can also employ machine learning to detect credit card fraud this is anomaly detection and it is used as unsupervised learning algorithms so you can also employ to segment clients based on their purchases so that they can design uh, so that you can design a different marketing strategy for each segment again this is unsupervised learning and more specifically the task of clustering these are few more examples and one of the most important example in the data representation or visualization is the representation of complex and high dimensional data sets in a clear and insightful diagram so for machine learning algorithms the data set can be in a very high dimensional space so for humans to understand the data you may require to represent it 
in a two dimensional space or uh, to a three dimensional space because humans are unable to comprehend the information which is in the more than three dimensional space so this is data visualization and it often involves dimensionality reduction techniques so that you reduce the dimensions and present in in a very clear and insightful diagram machine learning is also used in uh, recommended systems so that a product that a client may be interested in based on the past experience is recommended for purchase or even a music or a movie is recommended based on the previous viewership experience so in the advanced level it can be used to build an intelligent robot for a game this is often tackled by reinforcement learning the famous alphago game program that beat the world champion at the game of go was built by reinforcement learning so if you go towards the list of application or example machine learning products the list goes on and on but hopefully it gives you a sense of incredible breadth and the complexity of the task that machine learning can tackle and the types of techniques that you would use for each type of task Let's move our focus towards the machine learning systems. And there are several types of machine learning systems, and you can classify those machine learning systems by a variety of ways. So machine learning systems can be classified according to amount and the type of supervision they get during the training. So if you separate these different machine learning classes there are four major categories the first one is the supervised learning in the supervised learning you supervise the machine learning algorithm you first teach the machine learning algorithm that what is right and what is wrong or in other words you tell the computer you tell the machine learning algorithm that here is the data and here is the output read from the data and learn from the data and then make the prediction on the other hand the second type the unsupervised learning there is no output or no labels provided from the data so machine learning algorithm makes assumptions and it clusters the data with respect to its resemblance with each other then there is a hybrid approach called semi supervised learning which is the mixture of the first two approaches so in this case you may have some data which is labeled and some unlabeled data so you can use the semi-supervised learning algorithms to label those data or you can employ different kind of algorithms from the both domains and finally the reinforcement learning as described in the previous slide it deals with the positive rewards and negative rewards to award the learning agent to improve its learning with respect to the experience so another criterion to bisect the machine learning systems into two domains is to whether or not the system can learn incrementally from the stream of incoming data so there can be two types of machine learning systems based on the learning a stream of the data so one is the traditional one which is the batch learning so in the batch learning you 
have a data you have a machine learning algorithm and you feed that data to the machine learning algorithm and your machine learning algorithm or classifier trains on that data and then it is used to make the prediction and then uh, after a while you get the new batch of data and then you retrain those uh, the previous learned algorithm to get the further to the learning or further improve the experience on the other hand online learning enables you to train machine learning algorithms on the go on top of that you do not have to wait for the next batch to make changes to your learning algorithm you continuously feed the data incoming data is part of the batch of new machine learning algorithm and your new machine learning algorithm is constantly evolving with each online batch of input data so let's look uh, briefly at each type of uh, learning so first we have supervised learning as i said earlier the training set you feed to the learning algorithm includes the desired solution often called the labels so remember the term labels it will be used repetitively so there are certain examples for example these are supervised learning algorithms are used to predict future cases so for example you can use a set of rules to predict the output for the future input and you can also use supervised learning algorithm to extract knowledge so if you have a data and you know the rule or the rule is easy to understand you extract the knowledge from the data by understanding the rule supervised learning algorithms can also be used for compression and in this case the rule is simpler than the data it explains therefore you have to compress your algorithm so that your algorithm is able to identify the pattern in the data which is more complex it can also be used for outlier detection for example exceptions that are not covered by the rule e.g. fraud so for unsupervised learning learning what normally happens there is no output the training data is unlabeled again the label keyword is used so it is useful for clustering to group the similar instances together and it is used to detect anomalies or novelties in the data visualization and dimensionality detection is another important application of unsupervised learning so it is very useful in customer segmentation so you can identify which type of customers are more willing to buy a certain kind of product it is can be used for image compression or bioinformatics to learn the user inputs or characteristics semi supervised learning is the mixture of two so therefore labeling data is usually time consuming and costly and you will often have plenty of unlabeled instances and few labeled instances therefore some algorithms can deal with the data that is partially labeled this is called semi supervised learning so examples of these are some photo hosting services such as google photos and so in google photos you let the uh, algorithm know the faces of few person and then the algorithm learns itself the faces and identifies the faces of same person in different other photos where the person was marked as unidentified 
so most semi supervised learning algorithms are combination of unsupervised and supervised algorithms so finally we have the reinforcement learning so in the reinforcement learning your learning agent learns a policy which is a sequence of outputs or actions and as described earlier there is no supervised output but there is a delayed reward reward can be positive if the action produces a favorable outcome and reward is negative if the output produces a negative outcome so it can be a credit assignment problem or uh, it can be used in game playing or it can be used to build a robot to find out way out of maze or in a multi agent environment where there is a partial observability so that you have no idea about the outcome or actual outcome of the system but you have the general positivity and negativity outputs uh, experience with your agent so a typical example uh, for a robot you can imply that if a robot is moving forward and it hits the wall you have a negative reward and if the robot is following a way and it proceeds without any intervention you offer it a positive reward so the more positive it gets it learns that what process it has to follow and the more negative it gets it learns that it has to avoid the negative outcomes so in any machine learning or pattern recognition algorithm we have a general framework so inputs and outputs are the most cardinal components of the machine learning algorithm so inputs are again training examples usually in the form of attribute vector so we will clear those concepts for example training examples or attribute vector in a uh, in a very short time and there is an output which is usually a classifier or a learned algorithm or a logical expression it can be a bayesian probability or a prototype based or a linear classifier or the cn tree or neural networks etc it can be any algorithm or a classifier so what is actually needed is a learning algorithm for the induction of classifiers from the training data so first of all you have to identify the problem what your learning algorithm should achieve at the end so you get the input of training example in the form of attribute vectors and you feed this data to the training algorithm and then you analyze the solution by some performance layer and if you are satisfied you will bounce the system and if you are unsatisfied you analyze the problems and repeat the loop so let's take a very simple example this is not applicable for the machine learning algorithms but it is useful for you to understand the concepts we have described in the previous slide so we have a learning example and in this example we have a data for a person named Johnny and he likes different kinds of pies and he dislikes some kinds of pies so by looking at the data can you identify what kind of pie does Johnny like 
so there are six files that Johnny likes which are marked in the upper cell and there are six dislikes which are provided in the lower cell so we need an uh, a decision rule or an algorithm to specify a classifier that describes correctly the likings of Johnny so here is the data from the previous five problems so data is referred as training examples in the machine learning domain so as you can see these are 12 examples so each example is part of the data and examples are also called instances so these terms are used interchangeably and for every column is called attribute or feature of the training data attribute or feature so once you have all the data you call it a feature vector so a feature vector will describe a list of features and list of examples so as you can see we identified the data from the previous slide so we identified a feature of shape of the pie the crust size the crust shade the filling size and the filling shade so we have five features and we have the final class so that we can identify that whether Johnny likes this class or whether this Johnny likes this kind of pie or not so positive is referred as Johnny likes the pie and the negative is referred as Johnny dislikes the pie so you can compare these values with the previous slide so what pie will Johnny like so looking at the previous data we have identified a logical expression which is the one possibility of many others so we can say that if the shape of the pie is in the circle and the filling shade is dark or the shape is not circle and crust shade is dark then Johnny likes those kind of pies so you can note that the above expression is true for the all positive examples and false for the all negative examples so you can take a pause and confirm by yourself so you can also make alternate solutions so can you dare an effort to find an alternate solution here I bet you should let's describe some prerequisite knowledge about data examples or attribute vectors so as I described in the previous slide the attributes are the columns or the features of your data so these features may be of uh, may comprise from the different forms for example you can have some symbolic attributes with some discrete values for example you can describe the weather with the spring summer fall winter these are symbolic values and these are discrete values so for different kind of uh, users in another example you can have the user roles as symbolic discrete values so there are chances that some attributes can be boolean or binary values so these attributes will be again discrete but these will have only two values for example male versus female or present versus absent some attributes are numeric 
and these can be with either discrete or in with the continuous values so for example if you consider a continuous numeric attribute so this can be the height so again example description is represented as vectors of attributes so the overall data is referred as instance space or example space it consists of all the examples that can be described by the given set of attributes so if you consider the piles domain there are total five attributes all the attributes are discrete that means they have unique values so with each attribute we have uh, values for example for the first attribute we have three for the second two and for the third three two and three values respectively so the total size of instance space is therefore three multiplied by two multiplied by three multiplied by two multiplied by three is equal to one zero eight examples so this will be the total data for the pi domain is will be referred as instance space so in domains with the continuous values valued attributes the size of instance space is infinite because you will have to change the value at every continuous step which will create or uh, which will enhance the dimensionality of data so you will have the infinite space for the data so once you have the data you can employ a search algorithm based from the artificial intelligent algorithm to find out an approach to find out about the solution to explore the solution so if you consider a search algorithm which is a method approach so you have the search states, you have search operators and search heuristics. So whenever you are uh, exploring a problem, you may encounter with the initial set of solutions. And you should be able to identify your terminal state that at what point you will consider your solution is adequate. And you have the intermediary solutions where you have to change from one state to another. So there are search operators which are the algorithms or functions to find out desired terminal state or move from the one state to another. So you have to employ a certain heuristic for the search which helps you to pick the suitable operator which you will employ to find out the best uh, operators from the selection. It relies on the evaluation function that assigns a value to each state. So for example, if you employ a simple search, you can count the number of steps for each path to identify the cost for each search operator. So a traditional example in the machine learning search algorithm is the hill climbing search. So a hill climbing is a simple algorithm in which you have a person at the bottom of a hill and you want him to climb towards the top so from here to here so your end goal again identify the initial set that you are here and you want to go here then you have the terminal state 
in which you can be at any uh, where from the start position to the end position so you know the end position and you know the start position and then you find out about the search operators so in this curve the search operator is only one which allows you to move upward and then you have the heuristic to measure your current position with respect to your previous position and your terminal position so for example if you are here and in the previous case you were here you will find a search operator which increases this value and moves you towards a higher state than this one so here is a simple hill climbing search algorithm you create two lists for example you have a list l and list l scene so if you are at the beginning the list l contains only the initial state and l scene is empty so you can employ the uh, number of elements for example let n be the first element in the list l so you compare this element with the final state so in if they are identical if you are at the top then you succeed but if you are at the bottom or in the middle of the hill you move towards the step 3 so in this step 3 you apply all the available search operators that for example in this case you want to employ going up therefore obtaining a new set of states and discard those states which are already exist in the L scene so for example if you reach here and you find out a new state uh, which is identical to here so you will discard this state because you have already seen this state so as for the rest sort them by evaluation function and in this case our evaluation function was the higher position on the hill and you place that hard position in front of your first list L and then transfer number of elements these elements from L to the list L scene of the states that have been investigated that means you do not want to come back so if all the states have been transferred that means your list is empty then stop and report failure that means you are no longer going up otherwise go to the step 2 so by employing this algorithm you when you reach at this point and you compare with the final state and this will be identical you may have reached out at the top or in the other case you may have reported failure So the same algorithm can be applied to the concept or pattern recognition algorithm so at first step you identified first parameter uh, which was shape is equal to circle and you identified there are four circular elements and then you performed an end operator with the fill shade is equal to dark uh, another operator fill size is equal to thick and crust size is equal to thick so then with each other uh, scenario or other state you sort with another attribute so then you identify which is the most suitable part for example it can be this part and then you compare this path with the search heuristic to find the path which has the lowest cost so in this case if you have two paths for example this and this and you will like to pick this path so again the method is the simple in supervised learning 
which states that first learn then test so all the available examples are referred as data or instance space so these examples are divided for learning as training set and testing for test set so typically you divide 70% of examples into the training set and 30% for the test set to evaluate but if you have abundant supply of data for example if you have millions of records you can use 95% of data for the training and 5% data for the testing so this is a typical example of uh, training and testing examples so these are the faces of persons for face recognition and you divided the set into the training set which will be used to learn from the data the patterns of faces or in other words in other words face recognition system will learn from the faces and will be tested on new faces so it is very important to divide these data into two sets so make sure that your algorithm only sees the training example and never sees the test example before testing or evaluating so your learning algorithm always train on the training example and it must be tested on those examples which have been never seen by the training algorithm otherwise it will make a generalization error which will result in the poor performance so performance evaluation is again done by the evaluation of the training set so make a rule to divide the pre classified examples into two groups the training group and the testing group so always always induce the classifier from the training examples and then test it on the test samples whose correct class labels are known and then once you test the classifier on the testing label count the number of errors so there can be different measures at this point we are not more concerned about the performance evaluation so simply count the number of errors so the percentage of these errors on the training sorry the testing set is the error rate so if the error rate is higher you your algorithm performs poorly so if your error rate is managed you have a confidence that your algorithm will perform approximately better on the future examples so here are the illustrations of using classifiers or training algorithms for learning and application so when you are building your model or making experiments it is in the learning form so you want to learn a concept which is provided by the problem of your data or you or, or you want to build a solution and you have number of training examples and you analyze those problems with those training examples and you you induce a classifier which makes predictions on these training examples so remember this makes predictions on training examples and tests the predictions on the testing examples so once your classifier is approved it is transitioned into the application phase and in this phase you have a classifier 
which is uh, an example or a new example is fed to this classifier and once this new example is fed to the classifier your classifier generates the concept label for the new example in other words it makes the prediction So sampling is one of the essential techniques to employ when dividing the training set and the testing set. So division into training and testing data may be less than representative. So for example, uh, you may encounter a situation where there is uh, only one kind of data in the training set and there is no representation of that data in the testing set or the vice versa you can have some representation in the testing data and no representation of the training data so in a simple example you can say if you are training a classifier to find out uh, the images of cats so you can have set of training examples uh, with the high definition camera and uh, in the testing example you use the images with the blurred values or blurred images therefore this will be the misrepresentation of data in two sets and then your algorithm will likely to perform a very poorly therefore you have to employ random subsampling there are other kinds of sampling techniques which we will discuss as we will move towards the, the specific topic. But uh, generally random sampling solves many problems which are associated with the data misrepresentation. So you in the random subsampling you divide the data into n number of random pairs for the training and the testing set for example you can divide into 10 or 15 sets and for each training set induce or classify it differently then evaluate it into the corresponding training set and then calculate the average error rate over all the testing sets so this will employ this will help you to employ a technique which will encounter all representation of data so there are some better techniques which will be discussed as we will progress with the course so in some cases there is a vital need for the explanation because you cannot simply trust the predictions of computer system for example uh, in some cases uh, where you want uh, where you have a system that tells you the opportunity for investment in a specific area and if your system tells you to invest in the uh, in the any sector of your city without the explanation the clients are less likely to spend money and trust the system however if it provides the explanation that why you can uh, benefit from spending investment in a specific area so sometimes knowing the correct label is not enough there is also need to know the reason that why that choice is needed or suggested by the system so these machine learning algorithms deal with three types of domains where explanation is needed in some domains application of explanation is critically needed for example in medicine so as we describe a example of uh, detecting some diseases such as brain tumors or other kind of tumors uh, it is very critical to provide the explanation for example if your system detects uh, something in a person and it 
suggests the doctor to make a surgery so unless you provide some critical or uh, some evidence of the information that something is wrong inside the patient you, the patient is not willing to go for the surgery therefore you have to provide explanation in some system therefore when you are building systems it is critical to analyze the applicability of the decisions so if decisions are more uh, likely to affect the lives of the people you have to have the explanation as with the labels so in some systems the explanations are sometimes useful for example in the investment systems the explanations are sometimes useful if the investment is not uh, very uh, prodigious and there are some cases where explanation is not required for example when you are identifying a 100 page text or if you are classifying some speech to a particular class you may not require the explanation that why your system has labeled a particular class of document a particular class of comments to a particular category so after the hefty discussion with the machine learning algorithm there are some problems with the data as well so as i mentioned in the one of the previous slide that data is abundantly available in many cases however this is not the case for every problem there are cases where you have insufficient quality of the training data and you may require more data so for very simple problems you typically need thousands of examples to train your machine learning algorithm and if you problem is little bit complex such as image or speech recognition system you may need millions of examples and therefore procurement of such types of data can be quite expensive so you have to cater these kinds of data uh, cater the needs of these kinds of algorithm by variety of techniques so these techniques will be discussed in uh, next lectures where you mm, enhance or augment the data by variety of other algorithms so another problem as discussed in the previous slide is the non representation of attributes and as i uh, elaborated with the examples of the cat uh, recognition algorithm it is crucial to use the training set that is representative of the cases you want to generalize to this is often harder than it sounds so if the sim it if, if the sample uh, is too small you will have the sampling noise this is called the sampling bias so again this is a very important concept along with the variance so which will be elaborated further in the next lectures so briefly again bias is the same thing that if you have trained and machine learning algorithm with the high definition images of the cats and for the training set you get the blurred images or images taken from the web you may encounter high error rate which is the sampling bias that means your sample was not representative of the actual data and in some cases you have the poor quality of data some instances are clearly outliers for example some are noises in the speech recognition noises simple to understand that is a uh, voice which is uh, augmented with another uh, background noise so some instances may have missing few features so if you uh, deal with uh, images or another form of data 
you may get blurred images or images with the missing information. There are chances to have irrelevant attributes. For example, uh, some attributes do not contribute toward the actual outcome of your uh, prediction. So if you take the example of uh, pies, the cook's shoe size has no relation to the journey liking the pie or even your roll number has no uh, impact on the prediction of your uh, CGPA. So these are the attributes which are sometimes difficult to avoid. However, they add uh, the computational cost and can even mislead the learner. Therefore, it is critical to identify the irrelevant attributes and remove those attributes. And there are some cases where you get the redundant attributes, for example, age and the date of birth, both specify the same information. And finally, you can get the noise, which is attribute value noise or the class label noise. Attribute value noise is the noise in the input feature vector and class label noise is the noise in the output label. So you have to be uh, practical about the learning classifier because the classifier can only learn from the available examples. So classifier will learn from the data you provide it, from the representations of the classes you provided. If you change the data, your classifier will not work if the data is not from the same sampling. Therefore, you can have alternative classifiers. So if you consider the Pi's domain, there are only 12 examples as we suggested that there are total of 108 examples that can be described by the available attributes and our classifier a simple rule just correctly classifies the 12 training examples we listed in the slide but they may or may not differ on the remaining 96 examples we are unsure that this algorithm or this classifier will work on these remaining 96 examples because we have not trained our algorithm on these 96 examples. Therefore, there are 2 raised to power 96 different classifiers that correctly classifies all the training examples. So, this leads to a biggest problem. How will you choose the best one? So this is a problem actually and we will try to answer it in this semester. So we will try to answer those questions in next few lectures and this moves us to the final topic of this lecture which is the typical machine learning task steps. So whenever you are encountered with a machine learning task, you can use these eight steps to conquer your problem. The first step says that you have to look at the bigger picture. By looking at the bigger picture means you have to frame the problem that what is the problem is and what your customer or you want to achieve as a solution. So once you have identified the bigger picture that how and what you will want as an output and how your output will be used to make the scene. The next step is to get the data. There are different steps to get the data. There are different sources to get the data. 
and then once you have the data you discover and visualize the data to gain insights for example you plot the data onto the graphs to learn from the data to get the insights that what are the most productive features and what are the irrelevant features so once you have identified the relevant and irrelevant features you prepare that data for the machine learning algorithm so in preparation you change the form of the data for example you may change the textual form to the numerical form or other categorical form and once your data is prepared for machine learning algorithm you select a model and then train it and in the training you fine tune your model to improve the performance and reduce the complexity and once you have achieved a suitable performance level you present your solution and finally launch monitor and maintain your system there are many popular data repositories and it is best to experiment with the real data and not the artificial data sets and fortunately there are thousands of open data sets to choose from and there are popular open data repositories for example you have the uc urban machine learning repository the one of the most famous repository is the kegel dataset and i will personally recommend you to use the dataset then there are amazon web server datasets and there are some data portals open data monitors and quandl dataset so these are all websites if you type these websites into the google you will get to their repository and there are other pages listing for many open data repositories such as wikipedia's list of machine learning datasets there are datasets available from the quora.com and the datasets from the sub reddit so your task for this week is to uh, install the machine learning toolkit so you have to install the latest or supported versions of the following tools or components on your machine so you have two options to choose from here you can uh, go into the directions of uh, using the matlab or using the python framework with the uh, jupyter notebook so i prefer the notebook therefore i will recommend you using the notebook so you have to install python uh, and the version 3.7 or above and you set the environmental variables so that the python is accessible from the command prompt then install the pip installation manager and you can google through uh, to install all these components the essential components are jupyter notebook scikit learn which is a library which has implementation of many machine learning algorithms and data sets and there are different libraries to work with those machine learning algorithms and data sets which should be installed for example to deal with the data frames you have to install the library called pandas and to deal with the, the graphics or to display your uh, data into the form of uh, some graphical uh, figures you have to use the matplot library to mathematically plot your uh, graphs and then to deal with the numbers and uh, scientific operators you have to install the numbers python library and science python library 
abbreviated as num py and psi py. So once uh, you have installed all these components, run the command prompt and execute this command Jupyter Notebook. So a Jupyter server should run in your terminal listening to port 8888 and you would see your empty workspace directory into your browser and then you I will request you to experiment with the options and if you do not want to go through the hassle of the installation on your local server you can have the alternative such as you can use the Kaggle source or the Google Colab. However, there are certain disadvantages to my knowledge uh, if you want to practice on the uh, notebook. Uh, the Kaggle allows you only 40 hours of processing time during a week. And for the Google Colab, the free version offers you dynamic resource allocation and in, if the resources are available for the free usage, the, the Google Colab will allocate you the resources to run over the internet. Otherwise, you will be uh, you will not be allowed to run your code on the Google Colab until the resources are available and assigned to you. Back. So, uh, if you go through this option, I will. Uh, I think that it will be much better. So, if you want to know more about uh, the resources of uh, or the journals about the machine learning, here is the list of some machine learning journals. So, you can uh, go through the websites of these machine learning journals and find out the recent articles which will be quite beneficial for your future research. And here are some conferences which publish the high impact uh, research and the state of the art machine learning algorithms. So you can also explore these uh, conferences and read their transactions if these are available online. So this concludes today's lecture and uh, if you want to read more about the topics uh, you can read the selected topics from the chapter 1 of each reference book. So if you have any questions uh, let's conduct a question and answer session on Microsoft Teams at the scheduled class time or you can ask me any question through the whatsapp or other designated mediums such as email thank you very much